That is a million dollar question because at the end of the day, what is that perfect home? The primary health benefits of a fecal microbiota transplantation, I'll call it FMT for short, currently is to cure disease. I say it one more time, is to cure disease. And specifically, the approval for that is in the treatment and cure of Clostridium difficile infection of the colon. And that's where it is currently. However, there are new studies that are exploring how change the microbiota changes under disorders. And these include inflammatory bowel disease, for example, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. There's also exploratory studies being done in the field of metabolic disorders, for example, diabetes mellitus, and stretching it quite a bit more in the field of neurologic pathologies, for example, autism, autism spectrum disorders. But I really want to be very clear and caveat all of that by saying these are exploratory. They're good studies that are undergoing at the moment, but the current clear indication for its use is in Clostridium difficile infections. But watch this space, things will change. Because at the end of the day, what is that perfect hope that you want to put in uh, from a perfect donor into a recipient? The issue that we have here is that we've not really identified that. And stool is complicated and it's complex because it's made up of not only bacteria, it's made up potentially of the patient's underlying, we know that there's fungi that's potentially present as well as other microbes. And there are other things as well which make up stool. But that's the beauty of it, whereby that's why stool transplants work, because it's not only the microbes alone, but what else goes along with it as well. So to find that super donor, as they say in the, pub the published literature, is a little bit difficult. And so what we do currently is that we get um, donor stool, and it currently comes through a commercial company known as Amelie, whereby the, the donor is screened, there's profiling based on whether he or she has got any underlying disorders and disease, so straight away they're excluded. They're also screened for any pathogens or bad microbes. They're screened for viruses and so on and so forth. The stool is then purified, is then filtered, and it's then frozen, so it's then kept. And then when it is required by a recipient for treatment, it is then thawed out and sent out to the physician, who then instills it by endoscopy. So that's what goes into the process. The stool transplants are primarily done for disease. Let me quote you some data on that. So in the field of uh, microbial disorders and primary infection of Clostridium difficile infections at the colon, the efficacy rate is as high as 91%. And that's astonishing. Um, and this is well documented in the seminal paper in the New England Journal of Medicine and the subsequent other groups have published it. So in the patient with severe Clostridium difficile infection whereby the first line of antibiotics do not help it, this has been shown to be highly efficacious. In other diseases, as I had mentioned earlier, the data and the research is still ongoing this efficacy, but I think there's promising data in the field of inflammatory bowel disease. Potentially, and I say potentially, uh, functional gut disorders such as irritable bowel syndrome as well. In the realm of health, I would say at this time, when I am discussing this with you, there's no good grounds to do a stool transplant for health reasons. So for example, you say, I'm a healthy individual without any disease. I want to get a stool transplant to get healthier. There's no evidence or basis for that. So ever since stool transplants came out and came out to the fore, uh, not unexpectedly, an entire backyard community popped up. You can look it up on the internet, there are even DIY stool kits with funnels, with tubes, the instructions on how to do it. But here's a big word of caution for a medical professional. Don't do it yourself at home. And believe it or not, there are risks associated with it. So the availability of a stool transplant should always be through a, your physician, a medical professional, who will determine one, whether it's indicated or not. Two, if it is indicated, what this process is going to be. And there is a procedure and process why where the patient needs to undergo a colonoscopy, the stool needs to be obtained from a donor properly. Both sides need to have certain tests done before the decision is made on the correct stool that's going to be instilled into the individual. And even the installation process needs to be watched carefully and post-installation, we do monitor and advise our patients accordingly. So it is not a, let's do it quickly DIY. Is it accessible? Yes, it is. 
uh, here back in Singapore, and is uh, it is accessible to your gastroenterologists and potentially your physicians. But around the region, for example, in Southeast Asia and Asia, it's gradually beginning to pick up. Because you must remember, this is relatively new field. It is a new frontier. If you enjoyed listening to this video on fecal transplantation, watch this space for more educational content.